to another film about a damaged female individual, and that is Kumiko the Treasure Hunter. This one has been making the festival rounds for quite mm-hmm. some time. This comes from the Zellner brothers, David and Nathan, and it's the story of Kumiko, who's played by Rinko Kikuchi. Uh, mainstream audiences will recognize her as uh, Mako, Mako from uh, Pacific Rim this, mm-hmm. past, oh, okay. this past year, yeah. and she's excellent. She's a 29-year-old woman who is a little bit lost in her life. She doesn't have a boyfriend. She's in a bad job. She has a hounding mother who doesn't understand why she's not married, doesn't have kids. And she stumbles across a VHS tape of the Coen brothers Fargo. And she latches on to a particular sequence in the film, and that is when Steve Buscemi buries into the snow the <laughs> uh, fortune that yeah. he's acquired for, through various means and puts a red scraper to mark it. She believes this money is real, and it is her destiny to go and find it. She even calls herself like a Spanish conquistador. Like <laughs> She needs to go out and find these untold treasures. And she sets off on this journey, and what makes the film interesting is you're not quite sure how much she, – she goes after the treasure with such vigor and passion that you know she believes in it. But at the same time, she's aware that Fargo is a movie. And as you might imagine, the way she sort of accomplishes each next step is – difficult for her. She doesn't have any money, so she's sort of relying on the kindness of strangers, And she, but she's willing to sort of walk the highway in the snow to get to her next situation. She'll be damned if anyone tells her that this money doesn't exist. It reminds me a little bit of last year's Nebraska mm-hmm. by Alexander Payne, if you saw it, has a similar feel to it. And she will give everything to find this treasure, and it's really about that story. Now, I will say that the humor in this particular tale, I think, shines through a little bit more than, than it sounds like in Wetlands, because there are things she does that the Zellner brothers present that are obviously funny, and and the the audience was always laughing at those sequences. And I thought they did a really good job with that humor. But I will say, underneath that all, there is a sad tale about the lengths we as individuals will go to and lie to ourselves mm-hmm. to pursue something that we that we finally feel something about the lengths at which we'll go to to deceive ourselves just to keep moving, just to find something in our lives that is mm-hmm. worth calling a ray of sunshine Re- and you would should never ever tell anyone that's fake regardless of how how much it is or is not and so it was a really interesting film from that perspective i think the way it'll resonate with audiences with audiences rather will depend a lot on whether or not you see this as an adventure or a really really sad story about someone who is pursuing something that just doesn't exist and i think what I liked about what, that, what the Zellner brothers did is I think people will fall on either side of that but still find the beauty in this film. It's a wonderful, wonderful, interesting film. Very cool. From the title, I thought it was like, you know, like a like an almost like an anime style. Like, right. <laughs> like... I mean, you really don't know. And what I think is really interesting, and I think what I thought was very clever, is that I knew it was about a woman searching for treasure in Minnesota. And they, this is revealed in the first, first opening credits that it was about Fargo. And it's definitely not – an homage to Fargo, and they don't use Fargo too much in the film, just really the sequence where Buscemi is is uh, burying the, the treasure in the snow. But it was an interesting way about how we view film, where we can decide what's real and what's not. And kind of in the same way that when you're watching a, a great piece of fiction, you don't want anyone pointing out the mistakes, or you don't want anyone pointing out the fictional elements, mm-hmm. because you're enjoying mm-hmm. the suspension of of belief. And I think there's a there's a metaphor to that in what Kumiko is doing just on a grander scale, which I thought mm. was really interesting. Wow. A Place for Film is recorded at WFIU Studios in Bloomington, Indiana.